Um, so let's stick to, you know, go to, go to training camp. You know, what has been the most, uh, or I guess the biggest surprise for you um, in training camp? So to me, the biggest surprise has been the emergence of our offense, really. I mean, we're, I think we're going to have a dynamite offense this year. Regardless who plays quarterback, I mean, I think if Trey Lance is able to win the starting job and, you know, su surpass Jimmy Garoppolo, we're going to have, like, potentially one of the best offenses in the NFL one of the best offenses we've probably ever seen because we have so many weapons across the board. Um, I was very curious to see how Debo Samuel came into camp. Uh, he's came in and he's balled out from reports. Uh, Brandon Ayuk has stepped his game up to another level. So I think uh, he's going to be legitimately a top seven, eight wide receiver in the NFL. And I think he's going to do it for a long time. I mean, just the way he's built, uh, his makeup, he has those long arms, huge catch radius. He's super athletic. I think he's going to be a great receiver for a long time. And then, you know, we've heard of Ross Dwelly, you know, starting to to come on in camp. I think he's, I think they said he's second in catches in camp, training camp right now, um, if I if I heard that correctly. But okay. he had he had like a 40-yard touchdown catch yesterday in training camp practice. So uh, to me, the, the plethora of weapons we're going to have on offense to me is super exciting. Um I would. Is it a surprise? To me, it's a surprise. Just as I didn't expect them to be that good this year coming into the season, and it's super exciting to me that they are. You, we we didn't even talk about the running back position, which I think Trey Sermon is going to be a good running back. But I think this is going to finally be the season where we're going to see uh, Raheem Moster get twelve to fifteen carries a game. I think he's going to surpass twelve to. 1,300 yards rushing. This is going to be his breakout season. I think uh, I see a big season for Raheem Mostert in the offense this year. Nice. Um, let me let uh, Mr. Larice. what is with these stupid stupid questions? Harsh, bro. I came up with them myself. Jimmy is <laughs> going to take, take our team to a Super Bowl. Lance hasn't even learned the offense and has major accuracy issues. Give us a break. Well, William... <laughs> All comments are welcome. Um, I don't know. Uh, from what the coaching staff is saying, Trey Lance is already way above schedule when it comes to learning the offense. They're already saying he's, you know, um, putting guys in the right position at the line of scrimmage. Um, yeah, heard that. He, he does have issues with accuracy, but it seems like he also is able to drop a, drop a uh, ball in the bucket. Um you know, we'll see. I, I mean, to me, I think that there's more uh, smoke. Where there's smoke, there's fire, and we're hearing a lot of. We're here, at least there's a lot of smoke coming out against about Trey Lance. So we got to talk about it, man. We traded three first round picks for this guy there, and he, and he's throwing for the first time that we've seen. So I like it. So as far as what's been most surprising to me, it's just that getting guys back, man that we didn't expect to get back, right? The fact that D Ford isn't on PUP list, the fact that Hurd isn't on the, the PUP list, like even though these guys aren't actively like practicing and we're not seeing them like in full pads and all that kind of stuff, even to see these guys that we didn't expect anything out of, to even get a chance to be able to, you know, have them be a part of the team and, and play a productive role, I think is amazing. A lot of good news, something that we're not used to. We're usually losing somebody that's super important through training camp, not getting guys back and, you know, being able to do more than what we expected in training camp. Another what are your thing, thoughts on what are your thoughts on Jalen Hurd? I mean, it's a good sign that he's at least available, right? But I just don't know. I mean, if Jimmy's the quarterback, I just don't know what uh I just don't know what um that like you can't play three guys like I, I guess it doesn't make sense to me. The only way I think we're really gonna see hurt if Jimmy's starting is if one of the top two guys go down. Because what I don't think Trey he, starting. If Trey's starting, then you know every like then we could run like we could run sets where we have three, four wide receivers on the uh, you know, and just spread it out. I think Kyle Shanahan would be open, like willing to do that if he knows there's a guy that could like throw the ball at every single level in the field. So you could make a guy go short, make a guy go cross, make a guy go deep, you know, and then have like another deep cross. Like, so 
I think it'll be interesting. I mean, obviously, Sanu's uh, supposedly come in really healthy and playing well. Um, you know, and he gives the he gives the wide receiver core something different. But I mean, I don't know until I I'll see Hurd. You, like, I, I am up. really excited about Jalen Hurd. I mean, we all remember his rookie uh, one preseason game we saw him in. I mean, he looked like he was the best uh, player we drafted that season. I think Peter King had reported that uh, the the coaching staff thought he had the potential to be offensive rookie of the year that year before he got mm -hmm. hurt. So, I mean, it's super exciting. I mean, if they're if they were projecting the coaching staff that he was going to be better than Debo Samuel, and we see what Debo Samuel's turned into, it's it's uh, it's really exciting that we potentially might actually get to see it this year finally. Um, yeah. So that's exciting. Another thing that I'm surprised with her that a lot of people don't bring up is if Trey Lance does win the job, Hurd is such a big-bodied wide receiver. And if we end up lining him in the slot where he probably will be lined up in, he's going to pay so much dividends in the running game. He's going to be use that big body to block. And I think it's going to have a huge impact on you know our running game with Trey Lance and whatever running back we have back there. I mean, if he gives Mostert another half a second more, that's just going to be 40 yards more down the field that Mostert can, you know, because in a blink of an eye, that guy is gone. So uh, to me, that's a, something that's, I think, a bit overlooked is how good of a blocker Jalen Hurd is uh, at the wide receiver position. Yeah, I mean, if we could get anything out of him, once again, kind of like my theme is like where we already had really good assets at positions on offense and defense, and we're just getting guys back that, we weren't expecting to have so to me it's just only could go up right we're not not go down so um those are the biggest things i think uh i took away and uh we'll get you out on this one my man so talk talk to me just overall what are you most excited about in this this season and i don't even want to talk about what you're most worried about because i think you've been talking about it all <laughs> all through this show about what you're most worried about but let's start with at least the positive what are you most excited about this season? So let's talk about predictions. You know, let me let me make okay. some predictions here, Sunil. So right. I think, um, you know, all the doom and gloom, I still think <laughs> that we have, we're a 10-11 win team this season. I think that uh, 10 wins, honestly, I believe is going to win our division. So NFC West is a tough division. Um, you know, fans do need to take that into account. I think top to bottom, we're the toughest division in football. I think whichever team is able to get to 10 wins is going to win our division. I think we're going to have multiple teams at like 8 and 9, uh, 10 and 7, that range. And it's going to probably be a tiebreaker and 10 wins is going to win the division. I think we might be able to squeak out 11, but that's a best case scenario for me. Um, but, but my prediction, you know, is in that range, win-loss total. But something that's super exciting to me, I kind of alluded to it in our first topic that we talked about is I think we're finally going to see a 49er team that is carried by the offense. We've never had this. Like Jim Harbaugh was a defensive oriented uh, team, even though he was a, you know, former quarterback, they were always defense first. Uh, Mike Nolan back in the day is all defense. Mike Singletary, all defense. Uh, even Kyle Shanahan, He's never had a team really that was carried by the offense, even though he's an offensive genius. It's always been the defense carrying the load, even in our Super Bowl season. So I think what's exciting to me this season is our offense is set up to just break out. It's super exciting. I want to see a high fly. It doesn't even have to be passing offense. We can be running the ball down people's throats. If we're still scoring 30 points a game, I don't care. I just think that our offense is actually going to carry the load. Uh, as much a doom and gloom as I said about the defense, I still think they're going to be ranked in 16, 17 range. So that they're going to be competitive. But I think our offense is what's going to take a step forward and and we're going to have a dynamite offensive attack. And I'm excited for that. Yeah, I mean, I think especially if Trey starts, it's going to be pretty exciting to see that passing game. But I'm kind of a running back nerd. You know, my whole all my articles from all 49ers SI, I was the guy who was saying, we should trade down and pick Najee Harris because I thought that the running game was the biggest issue last season. You know, we were ranked 15th last season. And, um, in the 2019 season, we were ranked number two. And we dropped about 30 yards per game um, on average with that. And so I think that affected the, um, the offense a lot. 
along with obviously inconsistent quarterback play. So for me to be able to have a, a intact um, offensive line is huge to come back and really have an all pro at center finally, I think is going to be huge. And to go back to having three legit, you know, running backs in that stable with Sermon, Gallman, and Mostert, I'm excited to see how that's going to just make everybody else play better. Because no matter who starts, whether it's Jimmy Garoppolo or Trey, having a running game that could get you 140 yards, 200 yards a game is going to just make that play action look better. It's going to um, open up, you know, they're going to stack the box. It's going to give you more one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. It's going to make the game just a lot easier when you have that running game intact. And obviously a healthy George Kittle being there, obviously um, being able to like close down that edge so that we have that outside um, outside sweep there. I mean, it's just exciting to know that we could start gashing guys for like four to eight yards a, a run, a run like we saw in 2019. That's what I'm really excited about because I think that makes the defense better. That makes the offense better. Um, and so, yeah, I'm pretty pumped and excited about so that. I think, like in my opinion, I think Trey Lance is probably going to open the season as a starting quarterback. Just you know, over the last few days, how much it's turned. But even if he doesn't start off early off in the, early on in the season, I still think we're going to see run packages for Trey Lance with Jimmy Garoppolo as the starting quarterback. You know, they'll pull him off the field, maybe give Lance a series or have some packages. I I anticipate Trey Lance getting twenty to thirty yards rushing, even if he's not the starting quarterback per game. Mm -hmm. If he's the starting quarterback, I I foresee him getting fifty to sixty yards rushing. That's something that we didn't have before, so that's even going to help the run game that much more. Yeah, and these defenses in the NFC West all of a sudden have to change the game plan of what they've been able to, you know, for the last, I guess, the whole regime of Kyle Shanahan has really been a stationary quarterback there. So they've been really kind of like game planning based off of one thing. You throw Trey in there, now all of a sudden they have to rip up the playbook and like start from scratch because that guy, they were playing, you know, 10 on 11 with Jimmy Garoppolo back there as right. far as now they, they have to really account for this mobile quarterback and obviously that deep ball that Jimmy Garoppolo didn't attempt too, too often either. So for me, it's a really exciting season. Obviously everybody's, everybody believes their team's winning the Super Bowl in, uh, in the preseason. Um, but, you know, I think we have a lot to be excited about.